So should we should we start? Yeah, start. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I can't see everybody's headshots, but I can hear everyone's voices. I'm Veronica from Sea Change, and um, this is our first ever um, online circulate event. Um, some of you might have already been to to circulate events at the Drill House. There designed to be um, informal social networking events for local Great Yarmouth creatives uh, and an opportunity to, to share ideas, tips, um, talk about challenges of the, the current situation and find out what else is going on and any opportunities. So um, that's what we're, we're testing out today. Hopefully it'll work and hopefully it'll be informative. Um, uh, a few housekeeping rules or, or just notes. Um, when we have speakers, uh, everybody will be muted. Uh, Marcin, who's um, uh, um, social media guru, will be the, the, the controller of the event and he'll mute everybody and spotlight on speakers when, when it's their turn to talk. If you've got um, a question for any of the speakers, um, all you need to do is write a, a note in the chat box to say that you have a question. You don't have to say what your question is. Um, and at the end, we'll um, march and we'll unmute you and you'll have the opportunity to, to, to make that, put that question to whoever's spoken. Um, so we're going to try and control it so that we're not all talking over each other. Um, I think um, that's that's it in terms of um, sort of housekeeping. Um, so I'd like to introduce Joe McIntosh, who's the artistic director of Sea Change Arts, um, to give you an update on what what we're doing. Joe, over to you. Hello. Uh, I think my mic is my mic's still off at the moment. Is it? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, you can hear me. Okay, great. Um, well. Um, we're still doing quite a lot. I mean, it's a strange situation for everyone, of course. Um, uh, the sort of things that the organization do routinely year in, year out is obviously a big festival, the Out There Festival in September. And uh, we have not made a decision about that yet. We are looking at the options and the situation. There are obvious challenges um about going ahead with that or other events um but we will decide soonish the other things that we do uh essentially is to um produce a lot of work um and we run the drill house as a creation center since lockdown there has been a little bit of creation activity there um it's paused a bit and one of the things that we hope to do very soon is get that back back up into sort of full swing because i think there are a lot of artists um that would otherwise be touring and performing all summer that can't um and i think everyone's getting fairly um the novelty is fairly worn off of being at home um so i think a lot people would really be prefer to be making work um, in residency or rehearsing or training or doing these kinds of things. Um, so we're lucky in that we have a big space um, and it's not an auditorium. We're not a seated venue, so it doesn't, we have a bit more flexibility than um, a lot of arts um, buildings and venues. Um, we'll wait and see what Boris says on Sunday. Um, and then we hope that after that we can put a bit of a call out um, to maximise the creation activity taking place there. We also run a lot of community activity, um, including the circus school. Circus classes have continued. Um, Raul and Valeria have been doing that um, online and they're going to show a bit of that tonight and talk a bit about how that's been working. Um, that's been quite work. That's been working quite well. And actually, um, I'm part of a group of um, kind of regional arts leaders and other MPOs um, that meet up in our virtual yeah. world fairly regularly to exchange notes. And, uh, and it was interesting what a lot of them were saying is that um, in terms of alternatives to stuff in, in real physical space, um, the audience for online shows and full-blown performances um, 
diminished the the novelty of that went went fairly mm -hmm. rapidly um, but what people are engaging with and enjoying and are working is particularly participatory activity um, and classes uh, so they and they have been working quite well for us and we'll continue to do some more um, we we also produce work that takes a longer period of time so there are a number of commissions um, uh, that we began last year um, at the beginning of this year we're part of the without walls um, commissioning network so um, all of those artists including Matthew Harrison who's here tonight we've had work commissioned by that consortium of outdoor arts festivals um, wherever it's possible they're continuing to create that work um, and I know that the commitment from the without walls festivals to see that come to fruition this year or next year um, still stands um, and we will have a good look at what creative activity we can um, we can carry out um, and bring back that we had planned this year um, so for example is around now actually Emily I think that the beer festival was due to happen yeah it would have been um, next week um, in in the drill in the drill house um, we did put that back to um, October yeah frankly whenever it's able to happen it will happen we'll, we'll make it happen um, yes that's in a nutshell is is kind of what we're doing um, we're quite fortunate as an organization um, if you obviously read in the news and and uh, engage in the sector in terms of um, the, ver the variety of contexts within the sector um, Clearly, organisations that are um, very commercial in their outlook uh, and based on commercial ticket income uh, and that kind of income are having an extremely difficult time. Um, and I was very saddened to read the news yesterday that the Nuffield Theatre in Southampton has gone into administration. Oh, no. Um, mm. Yeah, and actually, and Veronica's saying, oh, no, and I'm saying, oh, no, because both Veronica and I I uh, remember working with the Nuffield yep. Theatre, who were a partner in Zeppa, which yep. was a major, major UK, France, um, EU project that we were involved in for uh, nine years in the end, actually, um, of uh, big street arts festivals in France and a number of organisations in the UK <coughs> involved in outdoor arts work, uh, one of which was the Nuffield, who did a lot of pioneering big outdoor spectaculars um, in and around Southampton and commissioned some co-commissioned alongside ourselves some very uh, groundbreaking big scale work like uh, water lits from generic vapeur a massive massive structure 21 tall 21 meter tall structure made out of shipping containers in human form that was the absolutely crazy show that we put on um, on the seafront of Great Yarmouth in 2012 um, so yes, so sorry to Nuffield. Uh, I really hope that these, uh, both these these assets, these venues, and these people um, who've been producing arts activity come back in some shape or form. Um, we are relatively lucky in that Sea Change Arts. I can assure everyone it is not on the brink of insolvency. Um, we're quite a stable organization. We're not a massive one, um, but we are relatively stable. Um, we do have annual challenges in assembling quite a significant budget for a very large festival. Um, so that would be one of the challenges of going ahead in September. Um, but uh, we're still here. Um, we'll still be doing things. Our staff is still exactly as it was. Um, and we'll be making the most of everything we can do we would dearly like to be taking some art out on the streets um, even if people are still in lockdown we're not quite sure how to do that yet in quite the right way um, don't think it's quite as straightforward as putting a grand piano on the back of a flatbed lorry and driving it around the streets but something like that maybe um, we would like to do so I think people need a bit of something else going on rather than just uh, watching telly and being on xboxes um, uh, but for us, the, the thing that is very much on, on my mind going forward is, um, of course, 
the short and medium term. Um, what are we going to do this year? What are we going to do about the festival? Um, what other events and positive things can we do for for Yarmouth and for the art sector, which is really feeling it, and for artists? Um, but the other thing that is very much on, on my mind is is the long term picture, and um, it's a bit difficult to think about that. And I think everyone finds that it's strange. The existence is strange enough on a day to day basis. Um, without thinking about um, the years hence. Um, but that's kind of what I do in my job and have done. And um, yeah, I, I see the years hence as uh, being pretty challenging. Um, the, the public finances are without doubt going to take a major, major blow from this. Um, and if things were a bit hard in terms of... Um, uh, austerity um, over the last 10 years since 2008 2008 being the year of the financial crisis and also the first year of the out there festival so just as we were kind of getting there the public sector financial rug started to fray beneath our feet um, but despite that we built something pretty big and significant i think the scale of what's coming in terms of the challenges on on uh, uh on the public finances um could dwarf that so um we're gonna have to be um very smart very forward thinking uh in terms of our resilience and not just as an organization um but as a town and as a community and as, as a sector um so we're really going to have to and it sounds incredibly cliched but look out and look after each other over the next years um we will in the course of later this year be making some announcements about um, some developments of the organization that we're going to carry forward in terms of our national role as one of the key organizations supporting and developing outdoor arts and circus. Um, and we're also going to be setting out um, essentially our 10 year vision, not just for um, art and those art forms, but also for the positive impact we plan to have uh, in Great Yarmouth. We know that we've had a very positive impact with what we've done so far. The festival uh, last year uh, brought 3.2 million pounds into the local economy, um, almost double the previous economic impact assessment we'd carried out a couple of years before. Yeah, people's perception is that it has been growing in scale um, and stature and impact, which is kind of true. The budget has been up and down over the years, um, but I think it has really um, bedded itself in. I remember at the outset of launching the festival, um, some very major established <coughs> French street arts festival directors told me, it takes 10 years before you've really arrived and the thing is really settled in. And I thought, what a load of nonsense. Um, but, uh, uh, there you go they're right <laughs> it takes 10 years to really arrive and for people to kind of really really know you're there um so that's what we'll be doing we will be looking 10 years in the future we reckon we will be ready for um some pretty tough um situations um after this and it will take um the same kind of tenacity and uh, strategic dexterity that we've actually had over the last 10 years to to build to where we are um to to carry on a, 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 and build on top of that um anything else i should add emily no i think that's really good thank you joe really informative um are there any questions in the chat box for joe or has anybody uh, here got questions If not, um, afterwards you can email questions to hello at seachangearts.org.uk um, if you have anything to Joe. But, um, so, yeah, next up is Marcin Rodwell. Marcin is the marketing coordinator for Sea Change Arts and has recently successfully authored a grant application for an audience development project and he's here to tell you more about it and how the project has adapted because of COVID. So over to you, Martin. 
Yeah, uh, so thank you. Yeah, so as Emily said, uh, we recently received funding from Without Walls uh, to contribute towards an audience development program for the Outlet Festival. Um, so originally the project, well, still, the project seeks to develop sort of mar migrant and marginalized communities attendance to the festival. Um, and we, we believe one of the best ways to do that is to create opportunities to participate in the festival via community takeovers. Uh, in this instance, getting the community to create various bits of decor and craft works created in response to an artist brief and their own cultural heritage. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to be working with an outreach coordinator uh, and a diverse team of three multilingual community leads who we worked previously last year. Um, and they were very keen to sort of help develop their community and their attendance to the festival. So we're look looking to host a number of workshops in three key areas of the town in the run up to the festival. Uh, the languages we're looking to target are Portuguese, uh, Polish, um, Lithuanian, and Russian, and the areas are um, sort of South Great Yarmouth, Great Yarmouth Town Centre, uh, Cobham, and Golston. Um, so that essentially was a visual idea before February BC, which was before COVID, um, was to like have, have these <laughs> workshops in actual locations. Uh, but so we sort of had to like tweak it a bit and sort of how can we do that remotely and digitally. Uh, so. So communication with these communities can still happen over Zoom and Google Hangouts. That's, that's easy and that's sort of the best way to help maintain healthy links with the community. Um, and the workshops sort of intended to celebrate the culture and identity of these various communities. And historically it's been quite challenging to sort of communicate with them. Um, so keeping with the community leads to sort of identify these community groups um, is, is really um, keen and ideal. Uh, so once we know who's interested, we will work with various artists to create and deliver materials, uh, craft kits with suggested instructions and analysis brief uh, to homes, we'll deliver to their homes and various other ways um, to create celebrations of identity, culture and creative responses to the town. Uh, and hopefully to decoratively, decoratively uh, take over the festival. Uh, we can also run online workshops with the artists as well. Um, but we do have an issue that the sort of communities we are targeting are typically from a disadvantaged background and may have limited access to the computers and the internet. Uh, so an idea we're looking at is sort of having the community these communicate with these groups uh, via posts, uh, via notice boards in, in sort of the um, community hubs and through food bank delivery services, services and stuff like that. Um, so hopefully um, that sort of garners a response. Um, and once we know who's keen to sort of contribute, uh, we're also looking to, if social distance laws are still strict around festival time, so sort of create a virtual gallery for these um, sort of artworks to be displayed in a performance platform for local talent to contribute to. Um, so yeah, that's the basic outline of the project. Um, we'll be keeping you updated as we develop it over the coming weeks and as we respond to what's happening, of course. Uh, but yeah, we're open ears to any suggestions and interest to get involved with the project. Um, so please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, I'll drop my email in the chat so everyone knows where to go. And um, yeah, that's me. Are there any questions? Anyone have any questions for Martin? No. Just, to, just to add that um, the, the, that program will be rolling out from um, early June. Um, and obviously, if anyone does have any uh, connections with either community groups or individuals who you think might might benefit, let us know. Yeah, I'd be really help up for helping to join the dots there. I know that the community community have been doing an arts project weekly during COVID. I know Kavus put yeah. something together for that as a sort of an art craft pack last week, as a bit of a pilot to see what the appetite is, um, and then I. I understand that other people are also doing it you know, have have that idea to do that too so I think the more the more the more the merrier but also yeah. just being sort of be nice to sort of join the dots on some of that so that you're that the overlap is there rather than duplication so yeah ab absolutely well maybe we can have a, a conversation outside yeah. of this meeting yeah I mean I don't I mean, chat I about I what what else you know is going on yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I, I mention something to someone and they'll say, oh, you know that so-and-so in the, that department's thinking about doing that too. And we have the real potential at the moment for, the, for, for audience engagement in the way that we didn't have before. So we actually have to use that to our benefit, don't we? 
Yeah. And, um, True. and using the resources that we've got, uh, make them go as far as they can, which I think that we're probably well placed to do that. Actually. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Sounds um, good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's funny. I, I say that. I, I mentioned recently. I don't know how, how, if I'm in privy to even mention things at the moment. But yeah, to have a private conversation about it, we would be quite good. And yeah, then, we can. We then can open it up. Yeah, we can work together to to sort of make sure that yeah, it's it benefits everybody. Yeah, and yeah There's not duplication. No, I love it. So, so, I think it's exciting. It sounds really fun, and and it's yeah. just about how you. I mean, March is very well placed to do the communications around that, and uh, yeah. has the time, and that's his role. So it's sort of playing to each other's strengths, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Great. Great. Thank you very Thank much, you. Martin. Okay, um, next I introduce you all to Raul and Valeria, the tutors of the Drillers Circus School. Um, they've both been leading the tuition and development of the skills of our students for the last two years. Um, they very quickly adapted the classes, um, so they remained accessible during lockdown. And they'll explain to you a lot more in a lot more detail what life's been like for them and how engagement has gone with our existing students and how it has reached a whole new audience. So I'll hand over to Raul and Valeria. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, well, yeah, as it was said, we had to cancel the classes due to all this situation. And so Drillas Online is the way that we found to adapt our regular classes into, well, an online version that the students and the community could follow. And it's a way of, for us, it's a way to help them like under trainings during lockdown and also to help them stay active and motivated. So we do the classes twice a week. Um, we have been trying to do them for all ages and for all levels so anyone could join and also we've been trying to do different disciplines each class so they keep interesting and it helps keep people motivated to do them. So yeah I guess it wasn't easy in the beginning because obviously for circus classes you need to have the equipment of like the discipline and not everyone has at home like juggling balls or a rollerball or a unicycle or stuff so we face that problem and also the fact that for many uh, exercises it's good to have someone to be there to spot you and to like take care of you especially when it's like your first time trying it or you've never done it before and you're a bit insecure and stuff so that was like the first two things that we had to think about. And we kind of solved that doing it, firstly, covering things that you can only do with your body and also finding things that you have at home that you can learn circus with. So we've done classes like learning how to juggle with Easter eggs or learning how to balance things on your face, like your broom or your pan or stuff like that. And also like, I don't know, like turning your pillows on your feet and just like learning how to do headstands and stuff like that. Doing <laughs> like couples or pair exercises. So there can be someone there to help you. We explain how to help each other. And we think it's also a good way of getting like the family together or getting parents the activity or maybe so them like really easy to follow and like starting from raising and building up so on anything before so they are really like easy to for everyone and yeah the students have like responded really well we know that all our students have like been following them every week and they actually send us, they record their, themselves like during the week as they practice and they send us their videos so we can see how they're doing. And that's really useful because then we can like give them corrections or give them advice. Also like answer if they have any question, any doubt, and also kind of help keeping them motivated like even from the distance. Um. You can see there the little video of us.
Mm -hmm. um, Can you still hear us? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're all engrossed with the videos. Yeah, those are some of the kids. <laughs> Is that somebody's grand grandmother? Did they say? It's Matthew's mom. Oh, okay. She doesn't know it's on there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she doesn't remember doing it either. It's just... <laughs> it looks like it's had a really good, like, take up. Does anybody have any questions for Raul and Valeria? Raul, you were on a cruise ship just before this yeah, well, crisis, weren't you? So, when I mean, you timed that to perfection, because if you had been stuck on a cruise ship now, it would have been a total disaster. Yeah, of course. <laughs> when did you come back? Because you were with Cirque du Soleil on a cruise ship. End of February? Yeah. End of yeah. February. And then I fly to I flew to Mexico. Yeah. And I was lucky because I I came here to to mm -hmm. to England. I think the last week uh, mm -hmm. before the lockdown. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I was really lucky to be here before the flights and everything becomes like really hard to take. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, for me it was really. Uh, hard because I was already like not in a lockdown but the life in the ship is like different it's like yeah trap too I I, I I enjoy the time but at the same time it's hard to not be free free to go out <laughs> so then with the lockdown it was like oh fuck. <laughs> but yeah wow. at, least, at least I in here I, I we are really happy because as you say uh, as an artist we need to 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 take advantage of this time in this space. So we were training really hard and we were uh, keeping the shape, the tricks, everything and trying to develop and trying to go to the next level and be ready for when everything happens. It's, everything's over. Be ready to, to restart. It's no sauce, no salad, or no Impeccable timing. <laughs> okay, so as um, Raul and Valeria mentioned, we wanted to keep our existing students engaged um, and busy. Um, but as well as this, we wanted to induce, uh, sorry, introduce as many uh, young people to circus in Great Yarmouth as possible. Um, Great Yarmouth is an area of quite severe deprivation and we wanted to give something to the community that's fun and interactive and more importantly, healthy, and most importantly, free of charge. Um, <clears throat> so this like all goes towards helping improving lives of people, and especially during a time when everything's quite worrying for young people and very uncertain. So we thought being active and learning new circus skills is, is one way of, that we can help you know, raise aspirations and to help well-being and mood. So we've decided to give out some free circus equipment um, that will be available from next week. Um, this will include bags of juggling um, equipment and spinning plates. Um, and they'll be individually bagged and left out in the foyer of the drill house for collection between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday to Friday next week. Um, we, we hope that this gets, you know, a good um, a good pickup from from the local community and and hopefully build a bit of a bit more awareness about driller circus school as well as as give back to the community in, in a way that we can during this during lockdown in Great Yarmouth so um, yeah so we'll put this online as well and if you could share um, to anyone you know in the area and just let them know that's great um, so next, oh sorry, do we have any questions about that or to Raul and Valera before we move on? Anything in the chat box? Uh, 
I'm writing a blog at the moment for um, our Chronicle I can't Times. hear you. Have really hard to hear, Emma. Oh. Oh, that's better. Is that better? Sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, Hi, Emma. So, hello. Um, so, um, at the moment, we've got a common time blog. Um, so, we're sort of um, talking to our audience through that way. Um, but um, I'm going to do next week um, because I've been sort of doing more. I'm trying to incorporate my blog into a online, which is quite difficult. But um, so, including activities that people can do at home. Um, so next week I'm going to be writing about a brief history of the circus, and so I was thinking about including um, Raoul and Bello's um, videos um, as, as part of the blog. So um, we're we're getting quite a, a good um, audience now. So that'd be another way in which we can share it and get it out there. So. Okay. I think I think I got the gist of what you were saying. I think I heard you say it's an online blog of activities. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, if you like we can swap information about the drillers equipment handout. Yeah, and include that and we can send you the raw files of the um classes if you like to include. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'm used to working out what people are saying. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, next is um, Matthew Harrison. So he is a local artist who is an associate artist of Sea Change Art. Um, he's been working closely with us for, for many years. Um, you may all be familiar with the actual reality arcade. <laughs> oh, my cat has just jumped on my back. <laughs> anyway, I'll just carry on. I can't. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, so the actual reality arcade was co-commissioned by Sea Change Art and Without Walls and um, was programmed at the 2017 and 2019 Out There Festival. Um, the arcade has since toured across the country and has appeared at some very well established events and venues. Uh, he's now working on a brand new project called The Community Chest. It's another interactive piece of art that's been co-commissioned by Without Walls and Tisha Jar. And he's been making it at the drill house since the cusp of the COVID outbreak. And he's here to tell us more about the project itself and give us a virtual walkthrough and tell us what it's been like for an artist in lockdown and the challenges he's faced creating in isolation. So over to you, Mel. Matthew. Thank you. All right, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, Emily's just sort of basically said everything that I was going to say to start it off. But um, yeah. <laughs> oh, <I'll>... sorry. <laughs> That's all right. That was your intro. Um, <laughs> good. That was a good intro. I'd have to talk now. Um, yeah, basically, I was commissioned to make a new piece um, by Without Walls Consortium, which includes a big thing from support from Sea Change, um, the Out There Festival and Norfolk and Norwich Festival, um, as well as the Norwich Games Festival. Um, it was due, the, the community chess that I've been making was due to premiere next Saturday at the Norfolk and Norwich Festival, and then appear the weekend after at the Norwich Games Festival. Um, the whole thing behind the community chess is that it's a, a, an escape room. Um, so it was gonna be a mobile escape room that could tour to, well, tour all over the country and hopefully to Europe as well and be set up anywhere. Um, obviously, the escape room boom, um, escape rooms became very, very popular. Um, and the main problem with them was that they're not very accessible to people with hardly any money. Um, they're quite expensive to do. So one of the ideas was to make an escape room um, that could go to festivals and be accessible to loads of people. Um, I then came up with the idea of basing it around, well, around a thing called the community chess, um, which people might be familiar with from Monopoly, but also as a term for somewhere which people can go to to access money if they need to, um, or help. Um, basically, um, the, obviously the thing with, um, well, I wanted to make a giant treasure chest, 
which is my main reason for doing it. So my idea was to make a giant wooden treasure chest. So I'm going to just show you some of my drawings rather than having to see my face. I'm going to swap. Can we mute Joe? Can you, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Yeah, so these are my original, I'm gonna take you through my sketch pads. So this is my, I was originally commissioned by Without Walls to do a thing called the Blueprint Program, which enables you, they pay, give you some money to um, research and develop your project. So the Community Chest got some research and development money originally through their Blueprint Program. So I came up with the, the idea of the Community Chest. Um, it was supposed to be an anti-monopoly uh, statement. So everything that's inside it is, Basically, you can't buy it. Um, so I'll sh go for this. Is going to be a bit mad, but show you a quick flick through my sketch pad if I can do it. I'm trying to hold my iPad at the same time. Um, so this was the final kind of plan of my original look for what the what the treasure chest was going to look like. Um, since developed quite a lot since then. I'll show you some more drawings. So ideas inside and it's going to it was going to be built into four basically four sheds that come together into one giant treasure chest um in order to be packed away into the back of a van so basically everything packs away um into little bits and goes in the back of the van you'll see in a little while that we took a time lapse of us constructing it in the hall but um, basically the idea is that the people go inside and there's four entrances um, the four rooms are all themed around different things that have been lost. So, um, say lost people who have been lost. So when you go in the room, you'd have to search for a lost soul or a lost love or a lost cause. Uh, there's a memory room where you try and solve a memory puzzle. There was a, an energy room with a lost energy. And the whole idea is that different people were going to go into this chest um, and work together to try and complete the room and then come together as a whole to sort of work together with people who didn't know to find the community spirit which is hidden in the center of the chest and then inflate the heart of the community which had been deflated so obviously this was all the idea for this came about before covid so the idea of looking for the community spirit was quite thin on the ground before COVID. Obviously, lots of, let me just change this camera back. So, yeah, the, the, when, since COVID's happened, obviously lots of good things have come out of it in terms of people looking after each other more, um, thinking about each other more. Um, obviously, there's lots of horrible things as well. Um, but the original idea was going to be that the search for community spirit was going to take place in the chest. And at the center of the chest was where the heart of the community could be found. Um, so the, the idea of the game was that you could, you had to get to the center of the chest and work together with other people to, um, to inflate the heart. Um, so you'll see here that it was going to be like a whiskey barrel in the center of the chest, which held the community spirit. And then people work together with foot pumps to pump the heart back up. Uh, so these are some of my drawings of how I saw the chest. What you'll see in a minute is how I've gone about making it. Um, so there are some of the ideas to put on the side, memory, energy, uh, people, vision, um, different ideas for the size of the chest. And then some of the, some of the ideas for the puzzles within the rooms. Because obviously, in an escape room, um, there's lots of puzzles you have to solve. Um, so the idea was that there was going to be lots of people going in every 10 minutes. So there'd be a quick turnaround of people going in and playing. Um, obviously, that might have been a good idea three or four months ago. Um, but now it seems like probably one of the worst ideas possible because you're trying to encourage people into a box to work together with people they don't know, touch lots of things that other people have touched 10 minutes before, work together in the centre in a quite close space, and then come out for another load of people to enter. 
So obviously I've had to try and rethink that. Um, a lot of the festivals that I was booked at for the community chest and also with the arcade have all been canceled. Um, apart from out there, obviously at the moment. Um, but even that, it, the community chest now seems like, although it would be a good thing for people to play and to do together and hopefully lift mood, it's probably not a, not feasible in, in the current state of the idea. So I'm trying to rethink it. Do you um, think it's something that could be counteracted with PPE? Like it, the issue of gloves and masks or something like that? I know it's, it's not very like... I think it's more the case of trying to encourage people into a small space and work together with other people. And I think yeah. at the moment, the psychological fallout of people worrying and about not even just touching things, but being near other people. Obviously, not everyone worries about that, but, um, but I think the majority of people will. Um, but okay. um, in terms of if, yeah, I mean, obviously, I've had to try and carry on working and I, I was very lucky, A, for Sea Change and Without Walls to fund the project, which has been amazing. Um, I've also had the amazing chance to work in the hall during lockdown. Um, I'm not saying that I've taken full advantage of that. I think um, I've kind of struggled with motivation. Um, I've struggled with trying to You can now see the time lapse. You can see the time. So yeah, so this is this is us. We've constructed the chest um, in my workshop, which is quite small. Um, so we, we made the individual segments in there and then we were, we were really looking forward to coming into the space to, to build it and put it up and see if it worked. So this is us in the first week, just as lockdown had happened. So this is us screwing it together. Um, mm -hmm. The structure will be bolted. Um, so I've been around since and bolted it all together so it can be dismantled and then this all of these bits of wood pack into the back of a Luton van um, and then yeah they will kind of be out and be able to be constructed quite quickly mm -hmm. so you'll see that there's four chambers um, at the moment um, and each one of these chambers has an entrance and an exit into the central chamber and then you've got four corridors that all lead into the centre. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you on a tour of how the chest is at the moment. Now, when, when I switch the camera, you'll see that I've been, I'm struggling to make my mind up on how I wanted to look. But you'll see at the moment, that's the chest as it is in the space now. So I'm going to use my <laughs> finger to put... So, I've been, oh yeah, the other thing is I ordered lots of material um, the day before lockdown happened. Um, and then the shop cushions, the wood yard, shut the day before it was due to be delivered. So all my wood that I needed to carry on and work only got delivered yesterday. <laughs> so um, I've been kind of cobbling together bits and pieces um, to kind of try and carry on working. Um, but that's the chest as it is at the moment. So I'm gonna walk through. So as you can see, I've left one side open, been coming up with some, there's a, some film diffusers, some light diffusers that the film crew who were here before me in the, in the hall, um, who unfortunately had to stop filming as well. Um, some of the diffusers, so I'm, I'm toying with the idea of not having a wooden wall now and maybe having a light diffused kind of wall that I can light the chest at night times. Yeah, so here's the entrance to the chest. It's supposed to look like a keyhole and a padlock. Um, and then each of the entrances look like this. Um, we originally made some wooden doors, but um, I'm now thinking that maybe black, even a black curtain might be, might be better. I don't know, but I'm going to do a bit of magic now. So if I say, open they should open without me going anywhere near them so that's a bit of voice bit of voice controlled action there um I have time to do that so i'm now taking you in the first chamber um so obviously i've not had time to do anything with the wood but you'll see that 
I'm in a wooden room mm -hmm. and the idea is that within each room there'll be puzzles and things that are attached to the wall and people can kind of work together to um, look inside and um, find things and find clues to help them escape. Um, so they'll find things on the floor that they might have to use to open up a door and then there'll be something in there and then they'll each have to get out of that room and enter into the central core. Um, so each room will have a door in front of them here. This one isn't voice activated, so it doesn't quite work the same. So I'm gonna to have to just open it manually. So the other bit of magic is that now you should see in the middle, there's a chair that is, should be the uh, whiskey barrel, but there'll be a heart magically appear in a little while. Um, carried by two circus artists. Um, so basically the idea of this heart is that everybody will work together to pump it up. So all people will come together from all the four chambers and pump the heart up together. Um, it's obviously pumped up earlier. That's one I made earlier. But um, round and round, I'm keeping two, two metres apart, neighbours. Uh, like, <laughs> is that staying up? <laughs> that did it. There you go. That's, that, that'll do. That'll stay up. Yes, you got it. Yeah, that's it, well. <laughs> right, oh, I'm going to go out anyway. So uh, that's fantastic, yeah. anyway. So that's the heart of the community, and the idea is that they, um, yeah, I so said people work together to pump that up, and then what will happen is people will have to try and get the heart out through the ceiling, so that then you can sort of see it appear out of the top of the chest. Brilliant. And that will mean that they've completed the, the escape room together. And then what I've got to work out is how to, um, once the heart appears through the ceiling, um, is how it triggers an escape for them to get back through the doors. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's basically, basically it. Um, the idea of the heart, the idea of the heart being there originally was the fact that it was going to be quite a secretive um, thing where the audience couldn't see, couldn't see in. They could just see wood, so they wouldn't know what was going on inside the chest. Mm -hmm. So it would look a bit more like this. Um, but now, due to COVID and lots of things, I'm thinking about it being more, a lot more open. So that so you might be able to get a sense of what's going on inside and be able to see the heart more clearly getting inflated and then appear from the top of the yeah it's it's a very it's a really good concept brilliant we we've had a question on the chat Matthew yeah, um, yeah from, my, hang on, from Julia um, she asks how are you designing slash deciding puzzles um, well the the puzzles were. Originally, um, let me just sit back down. Um, like I said that the puzzles were, were, were based around four themes, all around something that was lost. So the lost people's room would have been the search for um, lost soul, a lost love, lost cause um, that would have been hidden within the walls. Or, and you'd have had to work out ways in which to get them out of the walls. And then there's going to be a big dial on the wall that you have to place the people. So there'll be like little wooden cut out people. And That's you have great. to place, place them back into the community, put them back in, and then that would open the door. Um, the same with the memory room. You'd have to find a lost thread. And basically, um, re, re kind of program that and relink it together in order to get out. Um, exchange. Yeah, so, so lots of the puzzles. Telephone exchange. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, lots of the puzzles were kind of were kind of designed for people to do with the with the people in the room. But now what I'm thinking is it could work where the people all have to work together while they're in the rooms, so they'd have so they'd be distant from each other, but still have to pass stuff through to other rooms if you like. So. 
they're all kind of working together to get out of their room first. They're all effectively locked down within the chest and they're all socially distanced, but they can't come together until they've got out of their predicament. And then obviously once they come to inflate the heart, they're still going to be yeah. part. Um, so what, what is the capacity for each chamber? And then what's the collective number of people, maximum people in well, the middle? The, the capacity, I mean, they're, they're big chambers. They're like three point, they're like 3.6 meters square. So they're, um, you could probably fit 10 people in there in each chamber. I mean, the, the, the puzzles were designed for probably three to four people to play together. So it was a rough figure of 16 people every 10, 15 minutes um, who'd come in and work together. Um, as I say, it's kind of whether whether that will work now. I mean, there's so many other uses that the chest, even just listening tonight, I mean, it, it could double as a venue for art workshops if it was put up somewhere, because it's got four chambers. You could have separate things happening with each one. Mm -hmm. It could be set up and you could have the entrances cordoned off and I don't know, you could work that out. Yeah. Um, so, I mean- the, I think the, the design it, will, you'll know how to design it once the government have actually given us guidelines for the rest of the uh, year and beyond. Yeah, to be honest with Emily, um, I think even though the government guidelines will come out, I think interactivity is going to be a big problem for the next, for quite a long while afterwards. Yeah. Um, it, it, even if we're allowed to go to events and stand, I think being able to go in a small space and, t I mean, the arcade that I've built, I had bookings at um, the Eden Project residencies there. I had them at the British Grand Prix. Um, so I had some amazing things coming up this year, um, just mm. with the arcade. Um, and the arcade is very, very interactive. Yeah. But the thing with the arcade is it's, it's outside and it's not in an enclosed box. Yeah. The chest is not only interactive, but it's enclosed and it's getting people to really work together so yeah. although although in principle it's a it's a lovely thought um it's just a yeah will it have a ceiling will it what sorry will it have a ceiling a oh room? a ceiling i thought you said a feeling <laughs> um i don't know yet i think i'm kind Maybe of it could be adapted that, so it's more airy well i think it, yeah i think i'm probably I have been speaking to Tim about it in the, the sort of suggestion of maybe having a roof that could kind of come back almost and kind of allow a bit more air in or when it's a nice day or cover when it starts to rain. I don't think it will be a problem if people get slightly wet inside anyway now. Um, yeah. I think everything will be weatherproofed in it. And I think the puzzles that I was planning, um, I'm going to try and shrink so that it's not so puzzle based. It's more, quite simple challenges they have to do together. Yeah, that makes that's any sense. Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, all in all, it's um yeah, it's been a it's been a fantastic place to work in. I just um I don't think I've taken advantage of it as much as I should have. I've sort of struggled with quite a few things in terms of um feeling like I'm not um uh, essential working. Um, I remember the first couple of weeks I was very worried about that. Um, and then, you know, you just kind of feel like as an artist, you're not really, you're not doing an important job. Like some, you see people out delivering food parcels and um, obviously nurses and doctors, and you feel like you should be doing that. The job you're doing isn't particularly, um, you know, as useful. Um, so it's hard to, hard to, get on and get motivated but I think I've kind of feel like I've turned a corner almost too late because I'm due to take it down tomorrow <laughs> so now that I've got my motivation back I've, uh, I've got to get out but that's 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 good because now I, I, I kind of know more now how where I want to go and the experience has been a been a very odd one but um yeah it's just been an incredibly useful space I mean I've, I've obviously I've paint, painted the arcade made the arcade here as well so the drill hall has a has a facility, not only 
in Yarmouth, but nationwide is is it's quite amazing and yeah, it's just um, a great place and hopefully, hopefully um, more more people more of us can come once this starts to calm down and make some more work ready for next year. Yeah, certainly. I think it's amazing. Um, it's amazing, Matthew. Really, really beautiful, really interesting idea, really lovely idea about the community spirits. And, and I would say that your work is uh, very valuable and as important uh, in lots of other ways to, to people in the community and help, uh, will ultimately help people through, through well-being and engagement with fun, entertaining, cultural things. And that's, that's very important to, to keep going too, whilst you might not be on the front line delivering food packages, but it, it all goes towards building, building communities and, and enhancing a sense of well-being at the end of the day. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I really good what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, with the arcade going out, I mean, you do kind of realise how much that brings a lot of joy to people, and I just yeah. think it's a it's such a shame that the, the the joy of going and playing with you know playing with each other and like I don't know being able to sort of join in with things is it's just going to be so difficult <laughs> for so long. Uh, it's what people need, but it's um yeah. it's kind of it's going to be uh, restricted. I think Tim. I think Tim wants to. Tim, do you want to say something? I didn't have a question. Tim's got a question. Tim's live. He's appeared. Just um, let me just switch the camera. So there's Tim. He's beneath the heart. Can you see that? Okay. Yep. Could you didn't take it down tomorrow? If you were to take it down tomorrow, what what further would you be? doing on the on the structure at this stage um, should i swap the camera yes please <laughs> <laughs> um i think the thing is is i think that i think i've kind of come to the end i just feel like i haven't used the time okay. but obviously with the materials i think i think i don't what, think you should I, i'm sorry I, I wanted to interrupt earlier when you said that about using the time well i think you've been using the time incredibly well and you, you, but, you've um, I mean, you've had to adapt the thinking for the project and the and the the way the thing might work in circumstances that might evolve. You know, that's that's a real challenge and a real difficulty, and everybody's thinking in their own ways. But you know, this is the work of some of the work that you do. Yeah. And like Veronica says, it has its essential characteristic. It may not be a matter of life or death at the moment, but the fact that you've been able to take advantage space and the time and the headspace to not only structure it and make it so it's at a point where you can now take it down and pack it away and then you can take it out and put it back up and then work again. Um, you haven't wasted your time. No, I, no, I, yeah. I, I think, I think the main, I think, I think I work to deadlines and I think if I'm given a deadline, I worked that, and if that's slackened, I'm terrible. And I'm guessing a lot of people like that. And I think the thing is, when NNF got cancelled, I um, the deadline obviously went, and then I thought, well, I, I ain't got to make it for for then. So anyway, that's that's probably about my time up, isn't it? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Matthew. It's really good. All right. All right. <laughs> Bye. Um, let's quickly check the chat box for some questions. If not, people can ask questions. Um, after the event. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing really urgent in there. Okay, so next up is the soapbox round. Uh, this is the new section of Circulate. Um, it gives local creatives and organisations a chance to share news on events and projects and artistic support in and around Great Yarmouth. Um, so first up, we have Hunt and Darton. Uh, they're here to talk about a radio project called Radio Local. It's part of the Norfolk and Norwich Festival program, um, and it's linked with significant people on Great Yarmouth. So please welcome Hunt and Darton, and they'll tell us more about the project and how we can tune in. Hi, hi everyone. Um, I think we've just lost Darton because uh, we've got a 
another we've got gone to a radio so i've sent her to do that so sorry you've just got me now <laughs> um we are working throughout the region to build radio and we were doing this for north norwich festival uh, as our partner um and extending that from norwich also into this kingsland and great yarmouth um great yarmouth became a big focus of us in um collecting um voice and making radio um, so that's why we're here and why we were talking to Joe. Um, obviously now the festival can't happen as we thought it might. Um, and that's been two big shifts for us as a project. Uh, the first being that we can't do a 24 hour live broadcast from the city center, can't happen. Uh, we had a interactive set, which meant we had like a jingle making shared and a writing shared, which meant people were proactively um, interacting and, and continuing to build the show with us for that duration. Um, we've now tried to make that an online thing. So we've tried to reimagine the whole project virtually, which when you work the way we normally work, we weren't sure if it was gonna work, um, but we were challenged to do that in the fact that Daniel, the director, was also very keen that we became a location or a piece of artwork <coughs> that could and continue to showcase other digital content and other great things artists are doing from the programme that could no longer do it. So we'll be broadcasting from the 8th to the 24th, which was obviously, as everyone knows, the original dates for the festival. Um, for an hour every day at three, uh, three o'clock, and we're going live over four radio stations, including Harbour from here and Future Radio. And then we've got one um, with Hospital Radio in Kings Lynn, um, and we've also got um, Park Radio in this. So we're transmitting via FM, hopefully to reach people that might listen to radio but might not be online. Um, but also um, to get active listeners that are already there. Um, yeah, so we've been spending quite a lot of time on Zoom, talking to people that thankfully people that we already had met had great contacts with and trusted us because they were already in a trusting relationship. So we've got a lot to thank for everybody we'd already met because they gave us the contacts and allowed us into people's homes and we wouldn't have been able to build the show without that. So we start tomorrow, we go live tomorrow. No, that's why Holly's had to go because we're doing some appearances today. Um, yeah, so we've been um, busy reimagining it and I'm not entirely sure um, if people what you know uh, what people uh, want to ask about or if there are any questions but it was quite a, a steep learning curve to go virtual so quickly but we're incredibly grateful that we could and that we were working in radio because radio is a kind of powerhouse at this time um, and we had to adapt uh, the skills that we'd already been um, putting in place to, to do that so we've got setups from our homes um, so we've got studios, I'm in my son's room, I've just kicked him out, and Holly's in her shed. And we've um, <laughs> set up mixer desks and all the sound cards and everything to create quality radio. And we've learned how to stream that so that each of the radio stations just need to plug it in via kind of butt and ice cast. Yeah, so we're set up and we're ready to go live tomorrow and it's a highly interactive show. and we. We, we're trying our hardest to make that um, have the same resonance that the live show does, um, which genuinely tries to reach out to people and make people want to join in because it's fun. Um, yeah, so that's what we're doing and we'll be going live uh, tomorrow. I suppose I should talk about a few elements of the show. It's a magazine style show. Um, we built the elements based on our uh, practice together We've been working together for over a decade. Uh, we came from a fine art background um, and a lot of work we do is to create public platforms, but it's all about giving authorship away um, to our audience, our audience just usually being the general public um, and allowing um, them to take the reins. So we technically are hosts a lot of the time, both the silly gear and everything. That's all just to kind of, uh, you know, comically take our role on. Um, we do appreciate humour a lot of the time because it can disarm people and it can make people feel quite relaxed. Um, so that's often what we do, but yeah. Um, elements of the show. 
So our news is not the news, it's someone's news, for example. So we'll be getting on someone each hour to just tell us what they've done. And it can be something as mundane as, you know, doing the shopping and the encounters they might have had. Uh, you know, I managed to buy an aubergine today and that will be the news. Uh, or it could be something extraordinary uh, like the birth of a new child in the family in lockdown uh, or anything like that. And often the, everyone throws some really exciting stuff at us. So we're looking forward to hearing about the news. Each hour we're joined by a local legend. Um, so they represent mainly unsung um, heroes of the community um, who we've got on and invited on just to celebrate what they do. Um, and play a track a bit like Desert Island Discs. So they are having, they'll be interviewed by us. We have a dating show, which <laughs> might be the most terrifying thing we're trying to attempt, but we will be sending people on a virtual date together. Um, uh, but we'll be finding those people first. So it's a call out for love um, across uh, the region. And then we'll try and match people together hopefully we'll just have multiple matches and we'll be able to send people on multiple dates and then we'll be updated uh, as it accumulates for the duration of the 17 days um, we also have um, you can choose your friends but not your family which are daily challenges so you know from stacking toilet rolls to um, getting on guests to to set further challenges um, but it's all about kind of getting people active at home and um, working together, and collaborating, which is what we do. So we'll be setting daily challenges, including a daily uh, scavenger hunt. So if uh, you want to become a scavenger, uh, we'll be sending out the list every day. And all of these things are, are driven through social media. Um, and we don't know yet. We've got quite a lot of people involved because the free work we did. Um, and we know that we've got active listeners already. But who knows what level of interaction we'll actually have. Um, other elements, uh, we have Norfolk and Norwich Festival, you know, the, the programme, we've got um, pre-record and live interviews from a plethora of artists around the globe that will represent uh, the work that they would have been doing and we can signpost digital content. Like it's been really nice hearing about all the projects um, so far in this and anything like that, we would like to um, put out there and make, make sure that there's attention around anything that's happening now because um, people are, I just saw that hopefully the puppet man, we know a lot about the puppet man. <laughs> 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 hopefully the puppet man. <laughs> yeah, um, so we are trying to represent um, and hopefully we will, we've already had kind of Ruben Kay um, Yara and Devine, um, you know, so we're trying to get as many North Norwich festivals from the programme on as well. Guest appearances from the director Daniel Grine will be happening tomorrow and then throughout. Um, what else, what else, what else? We are, we've got food reviews. These food reviews, what we've done is any takeaway that's open in Norfolk that has been recommended, we've been sending takeaways to key workers and then joining them for their grub and just having a nice chat, but asking them to review the food uh, with the ultimate goal of, is it better than a hobnob? Um, so they've been happening and going out, um, I think what, seven so far? We've also been asking um, families to record their meals meal times, um, and it's a segment called The Family, um, and it's about a kind of, it can be slow radio, it does depend on the family we're recording, but it basically is a snapshot of um, a family meal time, mainly in real time, there's very little post-production. Uh, and that kind of echoes, you know, dialect and humour and just a kind of bit of like normalness and, and loveliness. Um, and it's funny, but as we travel around the country, they do sound very different. Meal time is very different. and. Meal times are around tables or they're in front of the TV and all of those things. And all of these things echo um, the reality of, of the community that we're, um, that we're trying to reflect. So the family is one of my, my favorite um, segments that we have. Um, and there's much, much more. And I, I feel like I could go on and on. Uh, we are about to, we, we, we are going on BBC 
Norfolk tonight um, with Daniel and, and to promote the show, so I'm just slightly conscious of time, which is okay. really annoying. So maybe I would like to hear from the chat if there's any questions, because it might be more interesting than me just waffling on. Let's have a look for you. Can I ask if it's a chocolate hobnob or just a normal hobnob? Uh, it's, it's, it's the endless debate. Uh, it's actually a, cho a milk chocolate oh, hobnob. That's a hard one to beat, isn't it? Really? It is, yeah. I mean, like, we put the stakes high. So, uh, yeah, I know that our first one going out is um, Namaste, and that, that slave, the milk chocolate hobnob. Any other questions? I'm interested to, to, to understand, or what's, what's the feeling of having lined this project up before knowing that this was going to happen, and then actually being able to tweak it in such a way that it almost enhances the opportunity for you? Or, or even like the, the platform is, is there and people are ready to receive and they really want something to interact with and it's even they're more hungry for it now than perhaps they might have been there's a whole other program of festival to engage with completely yeah um it's it's been an incredibly intense period because at the same time you we had to translate the background of the project as in the the way it works and ensure uh, we still got the level of uh, interaction we wanted so there's a lot of concern and worry around that that we've been working hard but then there's a celebration and that maybe we have a louder voice mm -hmm. so yeah you're right there's a that, that we're, we're now we've been given an opportunity but I think also we we acted really fast and it's felt like that it's been a very intense period we definitely haven't been bored in lockdown and it's been uh, quite transformative and we've had to switch our team out. So we've had beautiful performers that no longer are appearing, that we've let down at the same time, getting other artists involved that are now on board so that, you know, like you're giving money to certain people, you're taking it away from other people and all of that is very emotional. So I think uh, we're really happy that we've done it and we've arrived and I think it is a massive opportunity and I hope as well that when it goes out, it is something people are hungry for and it is something people want because you know, we're trying to make good of a bad situation and that's the whole premise of it. And we feel very privileged uh, that we were working in radio already and had any means. But a lot of our friends who are artists can't do that translation and even don't have the mind space or mental health to do that. Uh, so we feel very lucky that we have, um, we have our, well, we have, our, we have the means to do that. I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be so okay, I'm going to tune in tomorrow. I, think ready. <laughs> I know. It's kind of like, also, I mean, I say that, that in terms of like allowing yourself a sort of a, a bigger voice within a, an existing uh, festival that couldn't go ahead. But you know, meanwhile, every day there's something for us. Someone's piping something into your house or saying, listen to my radio show, listen to my podcast. Listen to my... So it's, it's again, it's sort of how do you, it's almost competing with that too. So. It's interesting as viewers, like where you also put your time and, you know, this, this is, this circulate is also a sort of part of that milieu of, of stuff to engage with, isn't it? For sure, but, but like with this, anything that's actually tangible and actually from your community, like uh, there's obviously region on a local radio and they have so much more resonance now mm. because we're missing, uh, we, we, we're trying to establish what that is, uh, you know, to still remain somewhere and we are much where we are now is much more important. We're not traveling around the country and we're not doing anything. So yeah, I think that trusted local, local voice. that's even more important. Um, yeah, you're right. I think even, even though you're broadcasting online and you have a potentially a worldwide audience, I think that local audiences do want that trusted channel, you know, that person who can almost show them what's happening elsewhere. And then that's the conduit. It does, it, there, there's a hot, it's almost confusing, isn't it, to see all of that stuff that's available. Well, it, it is, it's weird, it, it is like a juxtaposition, it's like a, a, it's hyper local radio globally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that, that's, um, that's the joy of it because even more, I mean, Norfolk Norwich Festival is an international platform, so there's no denying the fact that it's um, global and there's no denying that it's bringing um, the world to Norwich and the thing about our radio show is it's it's driven we were almost we were even gonna um, put a, a, a filter on who could ring in and that if you weren't from Norfolk you couldn't come on the show uh, 
and have like premises around that and kind of in that it's like this opposite of what people usually drive to do which is to be mega we want to keep it local mm. I think as well like as as a piece of art that will capture such a historical moment I think that like future in the future this is this is um something that we can look back on and it actually gives you an insight of a really like natural part of history where it's it's not you know it's not scientific it's not political it is these are real people and these real insights and families and and the other things you're saying and unsung heroes I think it's going to be a really sort of interesting piece of archive in the future I mean, it, it, we can't help it, like everything we've done has had the kind of context of lockdown uh, in its situation from the workshops we ended up running on Zoom. And like as somebody who runs workshops, I've never been so disarmed to suddenly not have the people in the room with me. And, you know, I really, I've not, you know, there's been so many, so much more um, like courage that I've had to find to kind of translate it and then realise people are still willing to come with you. and being that from a group of eight year olds like we did in, in Great Yarmouth um, to uh, we had much more of a mixed um, teenage and adult group from DIS uh, and the expectation there and usually when you're in a room with people you can read it immediately and you can start to kind of use you don't realize how much you use when you're in front of people so the physicalness of the project losing that uh, as an artist was such a huge deal but then the skills I've learned uh, because of that uh, and how we can run the project and the purity of it now because it is literally just radio so usually that we're a big show it's out there in the middle uh, we can rely on a degree of theatricality and stuff like that and now it's pure audio it it, it there's a beauty in it that that people are listening and there's a there's much more of a slowness to radio and 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 we can be we can be a lot more um like generous with what we're putting out on the airwaves because it doesn't have to be just like entertainment, entertainment. It can be uh, interesting as well. And, and we do do that when we're live um, on the streets, but it feels so much more natural to do it. Now it's just audio and that's quite a beautiful thing to be able to enjoy. So the, the kind of loss of the other stuff doesn't feel so bad at all because we can just really, really enjoy radio. Great. Do we have any other questions? No, yeah, from Ruben, we've got a, how are we tuning in as a free ra harbour radio. Okay. Ah, yeah. So you can tune in via harbour radio. Our main um, partner is Future Radio because they're, just so you know, that they are being, they're like contracted and have the money to protect it. Harbour Harbor are, are doing it as well and we're streaming to them. And, uh, that should all be fine. Um, but the, you can always go on the website, Norfolk and Arch Festival or radiolocal.co.uk and click listen as well. So there's multiple ways to do it. But if you're already listening to Harbour, it would be so beautiful if you had that on normally and then it yeah. just came over to us. That's the dream. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, so next we have Julia Devonshire, who is the cultural lead for Great Yarmouth Borough Council. Uh, she has some information for businesses and uh, sole traders to support them financially, as well as link up with other networks um, during these very unusual times. Um, so over to Julia. Hi. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. How is everyone? Thanks. Thanks for passing me on and inviting me to participate in this way. Um, I have prepared a bit of a PowerPoint presentation, but we can whiz through it because I think we. I just like to take a bit of a temperature of who's here and what's relevant, and I understand that this will be pre-recorded, so there's value in sort of being quite comprehensive. But obviously, being the arts. And, and like you say, sole traders, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I probably don't need to mention. Um, I have been redeployed myself through the Borough Council over the last few weeks. I've been manning the phones. Um, 
we're helping the most vulnerable members of our community signposting them to support with their getting their food their medications and that sort of thing and uh, there, there is another team that's specifically dealing with the business support side of things so every day between us between all of the teams in fact between the borough council we're learning a little bit more about what the bigger picture is out there what the need is and also um, sort of being able to feed that back through the county and through also the LEP as well, which is we're working in quite co close cohorts with, obviously, because they sort of oversee enterprise and business in this part of the world. So I have prepared a PowerPoint. Have you got that, Martin? Martin? Yeah, one second, I'll just load up. So anyway, um, there are some key documents that I would recommend that people who are interested in knowing what the Borough Council have got to offer uh, available on this website here, the Great Yarmouth.gov.uk coronavirus, sorry, coronavirus, not coronavirus business support link. Um, and if you wanted to, what um, someone to talk to about a specific um, situation, I would recommend phoning the lot the phone line to then get put through to the person with the specialist advice. Um, I have referred to the current documentation on that website for my advice I'm giving here, uh, but I do, and then they specify as well that everything is changing every day. So whatever I suggest now might be slightly different or slightly tweaked, depending on what central government say on Sunday, for example, everything might be flipped again. So if you could take me to the next slide. Um, so I'm going to highlight, I've just highlighted the four areas on the screen for us to sort of go through. If anyone is interested in finding out about this, obviously they are in the documents, PDFs that are available on that link. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, so what is it? Not-for-profits and charities, business rates potentially relating to people who occupy premises, grants and help for self-employment. I think the other stuff is quite that. So I guess another thing is like understanding who is who I'm talking to and who's in the room. Um, who will be creatives who might be solely dedicated to being, you know, making your artwork or um, making product services that are working in the cult in the cultural sector. And and if even if you're not, I think some of this uh, resource will be available. That, that is available on the wider, in the bigger picture, will be relevant to people who are working in jobs just in order to sustain themselves. So, for example, if you're an employee, or if you want to know about, you know, what your employer's rights and, and what they should be doing right now, I, I urge you to look at that. So, if I don't cover it, it's not that it doesn't exist, it's just that I haven't gone there. Okay, so if we move on. I want to talk about uh, self-employment. So I'm guessing, I don't want to go over this in too much detail because I'm presuming that anybody that is in self-employment is fully aware of the schemes that are available to them. Um, obviously, I'd like to note as well that things do change every day. And self-employment income support scheme um, goes live on the 13th of May and individuals that are eligible to that so that can receive 80% of their profits, capped at £2,500 a month um, for, the, to, for the duration of three months. So that takes you up to £7,500. Um, people who are eligible for this need to have declared their tax returns for the last three tax years. Um, and, but newer businesses that don't qualify can apply for the Universal Credit Scheme. I don't have the details on that. Everybody's situation is different. There's no one case that is exactly the same as the others. Um, and that's what I'm finding. Um, there is going to be some tax, um, tax delays on being able to pay your tax and um, declare as well. And I think that I'm, I'm going to land that there. It depends on whether you pay that, whether you make your assessment in July or whether you um, Taxpayers given until the end of 2020, 2021 tax year to pay liabilities that have accumulated during the deferral period. So it's all of this interesting language that you have to get your head around, but 
there's no penalty for interest on late, on late payments for this period at least. So I don't know, there, there seems that it, across all of the sort of statutory payments you have to pay, even like MOTs and tax, that, that sort of change too. So I've just sort of landed up there. I have put some information at the end of this with helpline to HMRC. Uh, so if you move on, uh, that for people who are, for businesses that are occupying um, buildings, um, there is business and retail, hospitality, leisure sector. So businesses in the retail, hospitality and leisure sector in the UK will not have to pay rates for the 2021 tax year. Um, this relates to shops, restaurants, cafes, bars and pubs, cinemas and live music venues, assembly or leisure property, hospitality property. So, I mean, there are, there are those instances where theatres might qualify for this, um, arts venues, that sort of thing. The larger scale places, I would imagine. Um, but a, a, anyone who does qualify that for that will have received a letter from the council. If you haven't and you feel like you fall, you fall into that category, then I'd be happy to point you in the right direction as well. So if you take us on to the next one. Hi, <laughs> if you have to leave. <laughs> nice to see you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. 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 about grants. So, grants, um, it appears, um, are within the Deep Grey Armoured Borough Council's um, capacity, are related to businesses that occupy buildings. So, it's about people who pay rates, basically. So, um, there is the Retail Hospitality Leisure Grant Fund. And there's two um, grants that are available there, one for £10,000 and one for £25,000. You can see anyone paying up to £15,000 can get £10,000 and uh, anyone paying below, in the threshold below that, underneath that from £51,000 can get a grant of £25,000. And you can see a list of there, the, the, the kind of properties that will benefit from that. Shops, pubs, cinemas, live music venues, hotels. So, and again, theatres, arts venues will fall under that category. Um, and if you're based in the UK, you're also, you, that makes you eligible specifically. So for anyone falling outside of that, um, small, bus small business rate relief or rural rate relief is also called, um, are, can be eligible for a one-off grant of 10,000 pounds to support their business. Um, they must be on the rateable list and as of the 11th of March, this is just to prevent anyone else who might have occupied your building from also applying for the same uh, relief when they, they're not, they shouldn't be. So this is one to look out for, number three. There's not much information about this, um, but it will prioritise small businesses and shared offices and flexible workspace. So I'm thinking if you are creative and you offer, you know, if someone's in a studio, for example, where they are, or, or charitable properties, charities occupying properties in receipt of charitable business rates would also, also be eligible. So that's an interesting one for creatives and artists, I think within our sort of bandwidth of, um, of operating, uh, but more will be disclosed on that. The government are still working out the criteria on that. So that's stuff, so next slide, please. So that's stuff that the Borough Council have on offer and uh, there are definitely going to be, they're there as a portal to other information. So it's not just offering um, the, what, what benefits they can apply or what, what funds that they can allocate. It's also channeling you to other funds. So this is um, quite a, a, a list. There's a number of, um, we know there's a number of portals to grant finders and grants online, but these are some that I've pulled together for you. Um, so interestingly, the, on the 8th of April, the government announced a 750 million package to keep struggling charities afloat during the coronavirus coronavirus pandemic, can you edit that? Um, and 360 million of that will be directly allocated by government departments to charities providing key services and supporting vulnerable people during crisis. But 370 million will also be allocated to small and medium sized charities, including through 
a grant to the National Lottery Community Fund. So that's why I've listed that there. And I think that might apply to some arts organisations and uh, those working in the cultural sector. Um, the cultural excellence framework, that's something that you subscribe to and you enter your details into, and then you can sort of do the sifting through of what, what, what your you know, criteria is. Anyone familiar with Grant Finder, it's very similar. They've also, you will know, got their own coronavirus specific funds too, which they can channel you to. Um, Norfolk Community Foundation has a specific COVID-19 local resilience fund in, and they're inviting expressions of interest from Norfolk's charitable sector who are responding to the needs and gaps caused by the pandemic. So I encourage anyone who might be interested in that, looking at what their criteria is. As in all of these instances, really, we don't quite know until we start digging a bit deeper as to what, what it will be useful for um, and how we can help serve those gaps. So next slide. So we all know the Arts Council, we all know the National Lottery Heritage Fund. There's a couple more that I've added to the list. So the Arts Council's emergency funding has passed its deadline, which is unfortunate. Um, and as we know, there are other funds that are on hold. Um, anyone working in digital, they have been uh, a digital cultural network, which is on hand to provide practical support to the arts and the cultural sector, helping people to explore and harness the benefits of technology to achieve goals and find new ways to reach and engage audiences and, de and develop sustainable business models. Particularly useful right now, I think, if anyone wants to explore that. Um, they offer training sessions, one-to-one -one surgeries, online resources uh, with the help of tech champions and then uh, developing partnerships as well. So, I mean, there might be some value in um, trying to connect in with that. Um, something that I urge everyone to look at and without me trying to explain every single funder and arts funder in the whole of the UK uh, and beyond is the Fair Funding Finder. So, you know, you'll find other other major funders there but you'll also be able to honour um, those that are dedicated to specific art forms specific parts of your creative development um, and audiences and that sort of thing so that is my sort of my go-to I suppose outside of the others National Lottery Heritage Fund have got an emergency fund on the go they've similar to the Arts Council, close the usual channels. Um, their deadline is the 30th of June and they have funding from 3,000 to 50,000 um, pounds. There is quite a strict criteria around this, but um, I uh, yeah, encourage you to go and have a look if you're interested. Um, obviously heritage, but um, you, you need to be a not-for-profit, not have either have, and have been a current or previous recipient of a grant from them and um, a representative of heritage or a manager or an owner. And um, that's, they are the sort of fundamental, you must meet all three criteria of those, but then you can dig a bit deeper and to actually sort of uncover how you might pursue an application. So the Coastal Communities Alliance, um, some people might be familiar with that. Um, they have quite a good resource there of other links to other funds and support networks around culture around the, the coast, which is quite specific to us. Unfortunately, I noticed that they had listed the Outdoor Arts Networks funding, but I believe that that has now passed. So um, there are items missing from this list that, I could, that could be there, but I, they will all be on these websites if there's anything live. Um, something that came to my attention recently is the Freelands Foundation Emergency Fund. They're working in collaboration with the Arts Artists Newsletter, Arts News, Artists, Artists Network. Um, sorry, the Artists Information Company, they've changed their name several times. Um, and they are supporting grants of £1,500 to £2,500 per person. Um, and for, but they have a total of 1.5 million pounds. So, and their deadline, they open from today, in fact, and um, I encourage you to look at that. I, sorry, I didn't know when the deadline is for that. So anyway, there's, there's a few resources and if you sort of scratch the surface, you can sort of hyperlink into all sorts of different directions. 
And I think I've got one or two final slides, just with some general information on them. So low, closer to home, um, you may be aware that the New Anglia Lex Cultural Board have been um, surveying the local cultural sector, uh, com community of creatives and artists through their Start East sort of channel. Um, they're on their second survey already and they anticipate making a survey every six weeks um, to sort of gauge what, what the issues are, what the appetite is, what, what the people's concerns are and, 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 and with, with a view to sort of informing some kind of recovery plan and maybe some funds or something into the future. Um, and that's supported quite heavily through Norfolk County Council. So Norfolk County Council, I ought to mention that their arts forum, um, if you're not a member, do join them. Uh, you can contact them via arts at norfolk.gov.uk to become a member or a subscribed member, but also following them on Facebook is such a good resource for every day they're posting new information on um, activities for to get involved with as a, as a professional, um, things that are for audiences to engage with, funding streams, that sort of thing. Um, and then they've got their own arts project fund, which is actually still live. And their next deadline is the 31st of May. And they fund, um, grant, they give grants of up to 500 pounds oh, um, every quarter. So that even if you haven't got something you're sort of waiting in the wings for this month, um, September will be their next round. So, and then the final slide, I think, if I remember rightly, is just some useful links that are to organisations beyond Great Armour Borough Council. So regionally, New Anglo Growth Hub has sector support for across the board and they they would be willing to chat with you if you have any quite specific concerns. Um, the government, central government one on the coronavirus support, business support finder is pretty good. And I think that's probably where a lot, a lot of our team information comes from. And then anything around tax and benefits do go to the HMRC. Brilliant. I think that's it really. I mean, like I say, it changes every day and everyone's circumstances are unique. So. Uh, we have a question. We have a question in the chat box from Represent um, asking if you're able to send over the PowerPoint. Yes, afterwards. no, I've got the PowerPoint and I did, I was going to have some like a separate document with links, but I think my advice is with the earlier part of the presentation, which was relating to Great Yarmouth stuff, do follow them. Just go to our website every day. Yeah, and see Great Yarmouth Borough Council. But the other things relating to the arts sector are all linked in the document so if feel free to share that i can I, I can apparently share it here is that right yeah you can attach a file within the group chat within the chat box okay i will do that but yeah now i'm on i'm on hand to speak to anyone but i mean all of that information is is in the world so um okay I, i'm not the i'm not the bearer of it but i'm happy to try and join the dots as well okay lovely Okay, thank you ever so much. Fine. Okay, so next we have uh, Ruben of the Represent Project. Represent are a Great Yarmouth based urban arts organisation. Um, they've presented work at many out there festivals as well as Festa Fiesta. They also programme many events at the Drill House in Great Yarmouth in attracting and engaging the local Portuguese community. And tonight, Ruben will update us on his plans for 2020 and um, he will talk a little about the creative platform for networking um, that for the COVID lockdown and beyond. Um, so take it away Ruben. Thank you Emily. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today on the safe and creative environment. Um, most of you already know me, but if you don't know me, my name is Ruben and Represent Project is a local urban arts organization and doing our fourth year um, of local engagement and creative production, Represent Project never dealt with such a difficult, difficult time as an arts organization because we're still a small 
organization. Uh, so at the moment we are not planning any events or festivals until September. Um, also our main festival have been canceled until July. So uh, the first project that we are not doing and we were actually looking very forward to do it was uh, the underground gallery. Unfortunately, we are not doing that anymore uh, this year. Great, uh, Making Waves Together uh, program will finish earlier and because of social distance, we are not going to be able to do this year. So we had all the sketches. I believe that March is going to show now. So you can have a look what we're going to be, what we would be painting by now. Um, so this is a project uh, that we are doing together with a local artist from Norwich, what is Kevin Parker and also Steve Pixie from Bristol. So it would be the first time that we had um, somebody from Bristol, from the hometown on, of Stencil. Uh, unfortunately, we are not doing that project once again. We will be looking for new funding to deliver the, exactly the same point next year. Uh, but at the moment we are discussing with making works together and doing a proposal to uh, the national uh, lottery, uh, the national heritage lottery funding and trying to find out if we can reuse the money to create a virtual and digital uh, platform, um, a digital gallery. So the artists can share some works and we can probably do a virtual um, design of the gallery that you can walk through it but on a virtual content and these drawings will be on the wall and we're still working it's very early progress that we are doing but basically we are not doing any finds on the underground gallery uh, we also will ne not be taking we will not be taking um, latitude festival um, I don't know if you are aware or not the festival have been postponed for next year so unfortunately we are not going to be there this year uh, but ho hopefully we're going to be there uh, again next year when the festival is actually happening um, it's, it's just a shame because it's a really nice festival uh, we were also talking to go to a uh, Leeds festival and new fe and uh, other festivals that belong to the same company of latitude festival all the music festival is getting cancelled at the moment in uk so I don't think we are doing any music festivals uh, this year. Uh, we were planning to deliver our main event part uh, once again. Um, last year we done it at the drill house. Uh, yeah, that's the one marching, thank you. So yeah, so we had the artists from Canada. We were thinking about doing this event again this year uh, because it's the only Norfolk uh, graffiti gathering actually so we decided to postpone the festival from August to November so let's see how if that go if that going to happen or not because once again uh, we are not quite sure if in November we still to have the social distance and if we do how we can deliver this amazing festival uh, well events uh, on a very um safety measure um yeah and we still talking a lot with sea change arts and trying to understand um how we can support them once again for out their festival they still kind of deciding uh what's going to happen to the festival so at the moment we don't know what we are doing at out their festival um uh, but if we don't take part this year, we will make sure that next year we can support them with the double of the passion and the sports. Uh, so let's see. This is what we done last year and every year we are just doing something better and bigger. So let's see what's going to happen this year. Um, at the moment, we are very, we are just focusing uh, on applying for emergency funding so we can actually use this time to focus on a proper business plan for represent project on a new marketing strategy on a new way to um, engage with more people and also trying to deliver some creative um, artistic work through um, internet and the digital platform so 
We have been applying for Arts Council, uh, Emergency Funding, Norfolk Community Foundation, uh, Outdoor Arts UK Funding as well, and some Tesco funding as well. So at the moment, we already have got two successful applications. So we have got the uh, Norfolk Community Foundation and Outdoors Arts UK funding for different projects, but all these will be related to create a creative platform. So this creative platform will have um, one side what will be just a virtual and digital gallery that we will be sharing uh, artboard sketches that our artists still working at home or doing on the time at home, uh, but also we can recruit new artists to take part and we want to use this gallery um, in Portugal as well. So we want to use it on an international way. So this creative platform will be connect to Portugal and to other countries. Uh, so it's by, we want to bring the, the community together through this platform. So, but on a local focus, we will be also doing on the same creative platform, some art ch uh, arts challenge digital workshops. So basically we will be challenge people every week at home to do something uh, related to art. So we just will give a topic. So we basically can do like uh, illustrate this t-shirt and we give them a template of a t-shirt and they didn't need to do a really good design about something. And we need to subscribe to your social media channels to, to see that. No, no. So we want to create the digital platform through a uh, website and then okay. through the website we'll be sharing links on social media on um, on the website you also can uh, put your email and you get the newsletters all the time that we are doing something but also we will be creating um, a poster that every day we will be well will be a day for a new thing so uh, the creative arts challenge that will be a competition that will be running every week so we'll come in on monday and people need to do it until friday and then they will have one week to vote and the winner is always going to find out if they win or not after one week the good thing about this community um arts challenge it is like we will be giving to these people a voucher or gift card of 30 pounds for Sainsbury's 30 pounds for others. So they actually will win. Unfortunately, only one person can win. So we can do at least 15 to 20 challenge, but they will win 30 pounds to, uh, to spend on, on food and suppliers. What will be really good at the moment. And that, that will be a really good challenge because a design of a t-shirt can be by, made by the kids, but then the parents will, will be using the money to buy some food for them home. So it will be a really good in interaction. Uh, we also will be doing uh, on the same platform, we will be doing some um, professional workshops and that we will be using our YouTube channel uh, to share. So we will be working with our artists. So we will be once again asking uh, Raf from Portugal to do a workshop over there um, on a video that we can share. So, and all these workshops will be about how we can do some art with suppliers that we have got at home. So, how you can build uh, a canvas. So, we're still talking with artists and see what they can bring. But one of our ideas is basically uh, how you can actually design animals on the paper by making a shadow with your hand. So, you, 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 you basically make a teddy bear with your hands. <laughs> I'm not the best person to explain, but the reflection, the shadow will go to the paper and then you basically carry on painting around it. And then uh -huh. the whole is just amazing. So we're still talking with artists, illustrators and everything to de deliver these workshops. Uh, okay. basically, these workshops will be available online and we will be using these workshops to do advertising as well. Every video to do advertising about the stuff that others organizations are doing. So we want to add on the bottom, some sharing some like news and sharing some stuff. So it's not only about the workshop, but it's about can share more, spreading more the words. Um, Fantastic. So, yeah, we'll be doing some digital workshops. And of course we're gonna be doing some creative talks. So we will actually 
join um, with the our main funding for these gates. Uh, what is the Arts Council England? We will be joining the web webinar jam, and basically that's actually led us to a four presence over there, so we can have four people over there as a like um, a cre creative talkers, and they can be talking about like I don't know. Um, what is the moment they are doing. So they can be artists, they can be writers, they can be musicians, they can be whatever, but will be like creative talks, so about 30 minutes, and basically people can join in, but uh, do questions to them. So we'll be like trying to do basically creative talks. Um, so it's basically creating a creative platform. So if you, any of you guys want to take part, we will be trying to get all the organizations in because the most people we get in, the better. Um, but this is about creating a creative platform that we can uh, support other people and we can give challenge to them to do it and then and other things to do it. Um, for those that they don't have the chance to um, be online and be part of this creative platform, we will add something to the creative platform that somebody can like send us an email or something, giving the address of this person. And we will try to create a, a PDF with all the instructions of a workshop or something. And myself or others, we will be delivering on the door, like Amazon driver, knock on the door and run away basically. <laughs> we will try to get everybody engaged. And the only thing we ask after it is like, once you access the internet, just share some pictures. Uh, but yeah basically this is the creative platform so um, I will from next week trying to start talking with another organizations and trying to get uh, more people in but the main thing on, on this creative platform is, is for everybody but our three big things for us it is be local, think local and act local so this will be our three main um, focus brilliant even knowing that we want to do the engagement with internationally. And we will doing this engagement by do a creative talk with Rob in Portugal and everybody can join in. Probably give a talk with Brent Ray Fraser. I don't know, trying to contact other artists to join in to this um, webinar jam. But uh, the beauty of lockdown, there's, there's no travel expenses any longer. And no, it's we're, not. we're connected to the globe. So. It is. It is. Uh, to be honest, this the, the lockdown is has been really good, and for a long time we have been trying to put a, a new business plan on represent project. We will be was trying to do a strategy marketing to get more audience and more people in. And to be honest, this is a really good time to focus on new ways to engage to more people. And to be honest, you know, sometimes Facebook and that is not a really good engagement, but to be honest, this is the opportunity, opportunity to use this as a useful thing and actually to engage to these people to come when we can actually do festivals and be on a social uh, gathering. And last thing I just want to say, um, thank you very much for, rep um, for representing, sorry. Thank you very much, Sitch in charge and Veronica because she have been the main and and how you say anchor i don't know she have been the main thing like support me to get all this uh done she she be she has been there like give me all the advice um i've been receiving emails from jules and everybody but like on funding and writing and that she have been like like a mother basically so uh, <laughs> thank you very much oh you're welcome reuben <laughs> you're welcome yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? I think, I think the challenge is just to keep talking, isn't it? And communicating with your community just so that, not, not the arts community, I mean, not just the people that you're making for in this situation, just so there are those linkages continuing. So it's not just a one way sort of do it, take de delivery, delivery. It's, it's sort of like extrapolating and sharing those conversations so that they are going as far as they possibly can and um you know it, it's it's quite isolating i have to say isn't it when we're sort of so, it's no no shortage of ideas it's just mm. when you just want to speak to people like you sometimes <laughs> just to kind of 
bounce things around and um because that's how you get further right or or how you yeah. can properly innovate rather so anyway let how how old, veronica <laughs> your, how can we make this we've got another one of these in J june is that correct <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I'm just laughing. I can see Tim's nostril. <laughs> <laughs> is that a gender item for next time? Oh dear. Um, I, I guess, yeah, well, I, um, I was going to just wrap up by saying thank you to everybody and reminding uh, people of the date of the next Zoom. I think it's been proven to be really successful. We thought it, it had last for an hour and we've been talking solidly for two hours. And um, so obviously people have got a lot of things to say and to share, which is great and, and brilliant that we've recorded this and can share it with other people moving forward. But um, I can just hear people, my neighbours banging pans and clapping outside. Oh, yeah. Um, oh. yeah the next... It's Thursday, isn't it? The, it's Thursday. So the next meeting is on the 4th of June and um, the only other thing I was going to remind people to do is if you haven't done it already sign up to the directory um, and also um, mention that we have a, a page on our website on the Making Waves Together page with some resources and uh, uh, support links uh, regarding Covid and potential funding etc etc. So. Um, we were going to leave the, the chat room open for 30 minutes in case anyone wants anything to say anything else. Um, personally, I'm going to go outside and clap. I think we should. Yeah. 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 But We've thank run you over again, little. everybody. It's been, it's been great and really, really fruitful and interesting. If anyone's yeah. missing the seafront, we've now got a cl almost a clear view of the horizon as well from Marina's uh, for the Marina Centre. So it's quite cool. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Okay, bye everybody. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye.